All right, you're looking at your work after it's been put together and tacked up. The parts are clean, the machine is set up and ready to go. But let me tell you, after teaching this joint to people for decades, why are 90% of TIG welders unable to do this joint properly? This joint looks simple enough, but it can take even the most experienced welder and have them making mistakes they don't even know they're making. Okay, this is the mock-up of the joint right here. You can literally use three pieces of practice plate to try this one out. But as we can see, after it is all put together, it gives us three welding passes that we need to do. We got one here, we got another one continuing on here, and we even got one going vertical like this here. I'm sure you can imagine by looking at this joint that this kind of setup is very common with TIG welding. So many plate configurations can have corners like this, the inside of boxes that need to be welded or something like that, fuel tanks, different fabrication projects, you get the idea. Thinking about so many projects that can potentially have this configuration, what makes it so difficult? It's this area right here. This is an area that I call the pocket. We basically have all welds heading into or around a tight corner here. And this is where all of the problems can occur. You may hear of people referring to something like this as welding into a corner, welding in or out or through a corner, whatever, it doesn't matter. So here are the problems that even experienced welders will have to potentially deal with. Heading into a corner and trying to maneuver and maintain good consistency. Honestly, with this one, visibility sucks. Welding a fillet joint, especially in the 90 degree position, notoriously always has challenging visibility. And now what we're doing here is we are heading into a corner, which makes this visibility or challenge to see properly even worse. What this is going to do is take a joint that notoriously has poor visibility and cut it in half, making it even worse. The next problem that someone's gonna have to deal with is comfort. I talk about this a lot on my channel with all the demonstrations I do. As you are working on joints like this, that might be a little bit more challenging. You have to be able to maintain and properly control good consistency while you are welding. Now, notoriously, what's gonna happen, people are gonna experience incomplete fusion. You're gonna see areas where the filler material has not properly blended into the base material. This can leave little gaps, little pinholes, voids, stuff like that behind. It's also very common that you can see welds not properly connected, leaving a gap in between passes. Obviously, all of these problems are not what we're after. And the thing is with multiple passes going in or around this intersection here, some of these problems can occur literally anywhere in any one of these three positions. Notoriously, what will happen is after the fact, somebody will see the mistake that has occurred with a pinhole or a gap or something like that. They'll arc up, initiate a little bit of heat, try and blend things in, maybe add more filler. What this is gonna do is it's gonna add random buttons here and there and make the flow of this joint look totally crazy. <laughs> We'll touch on that in a second here, hang on. Now, there's an important detail type problem that can happen with this one as well. And this is to do with the welding directions. We want everything to do with our stuff to look consistent, especially in an intersection like this where we have a few different welds flowing together. We don't want passes going this way or that way, up or down, random directions. We don't want starts or buttons occurring in places that don't look good. This is gonna mess up the consistency with the flow that we could create with this joint. Trust me, with everything I'm gonna tell you in this episode, you're gonna be able to make this one look amazing. Now, obviously we talked about uh, being uncomfortable and having really poor visibility with this one. What's well, another thing that these problems can cause you to do? That's right, dipping. And dipping can even occur from professionals. That clip of that savage dip that just happened right there? Yeah, that's right, that was me. So let's get into the tips that are gonna help you take care of all of these problems. Okay, the first and most important thing we're gonna do here is consider welding directions. Given that we have a few passes that we need to consider here, which way do we want to point them? Now, bottom line, this really is up to you, but let's go over some fundamentals of what I do when I'm working on stuff in my shop here. A basic rule for me is I don't want any stupid buttons or stupid starts in any dumb places. For example, if you do these two welds here and you do them absolutely perfect, if you do this vertical one here last, it leaves a button right in the middle, messing up whatever nice work you've done here and messing up the consistency with your welding directions. Or if we start in this corner right here, right in the middle of the work that you already did, obviously we have a random start here covering up the nice flow of this corner. We do not want this. Consider this here instead. If we plan to start with this one here first, then this one is going to go over top when we do the one on the bottom. And this is gonna hide the button or the start underneath and we roll right over it. Good planning, right? Sometimes it just leaves us with no option. We have to finish and terminate in the corner. So if this is what's gonna to have to happen, I would recommend pointing all of the welding towards this corner. Then we have good consistency with our welding direction and the button right in the middle. This is gonna tie everything up nicely like a pretty little bow on a Christmas present. 
Now, I personally love the look of a bunch of welds that come from the same direction. So starting here in the most problematic area gives us time to make sure that we start each pass properly to take care of any problems with blending in the pocket. And then obviously at this point, you plan what to do with your buttons as you point them in other directions later. By the way, I have a free aluminum TIG welding class that you can register for. It's the best way to learn how to TIG weld aluminum from your home shop or whatever you got to learn in. Like I said, it's completely free, so register for it if you want to get a good start with learning TIG welding aluminum properly. But given all the different situations we can have with an intersection like this, let's do the best of all of these options. Check this idea out here. This is going to help you out. First, I'm going to do my vertical pass heading up. I'm going to start in the center. This way, like I talked about, I can properly blend the start in fully to make sure that when I weld over it later, it's going to be easy to roll over it and I'm not going to have any problems with gaps, voids, or incomplete fusion. So like I said, I'm going to do this one up first and I'm going to weld it in the vertical up position. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld the bottom pass heading into the corner, which will be the most difficult part. But I've got a really sneaky tip that's going to help you out with this. Stay tuned for that. Then I will completely blend the corner in the pocket here. And then I'm going to head out towards the end and terminate out here somewhere. So let's get everything set up with my welding machine here. And because I'm going to be making some adjustments to my setup as I'm welding, I'm going to show you my settings that I end up settling on at the end of this episode here. Stay tuned for that. Now, of course, with my pieces, I'm going to wire brush all of my welding areas. Yes, I take a crazy amount of time to do this with the same detail that I'm going to weld it with. When you assemble it, it's going to look awesome after. I'm going to decontaminate properly, wipe everything down. I'm going to do my tacking carefully and make sure that I get good alignment with all of my joints. But once we are assembled properly, let's get comfortable and check off some of the biggest problems that we talked about earlier. If you skipped over all that stuff, go back, watch that part. I need to be able to see and travel comfortably. Heading away from a corner is definitely going to help with this a lot. Traveling vertical down towards this corner is going to be a little bit more challenging to keep consistent. And obviously feeding material while heading vertically down is going to be very challenging. All right, flashing up and looking at my starting point here, right in the pocket. You can see I'm actually pretty light on the filler material amount. If we use too much filler material, this can really create an obstacle that we have to deal with later. Using a little less filler material as well as good heat is going to allow these edges to blend in nice and smooth. You can see that when I finish preparing my actual start here, each pass direction basically has a nice little pocket to either terminate in or leave from. All the edges are blended. We have no voids or incomplete fusion at this point. Positioning vertically can always be a little bit awkward to weld. Just make sure that you have something to run your arm along or something to stabilize your arm. You can see right here that I'm using a little block to stabilize my arm so I can weld comfortably. This way I can travel comfortably and I can position myself so I can see clearly. So looking back at all the problems that we talked about earlier, we have our passes organized and broken down into which ones should come first. Good planning so we have good direction planned for each pass. We've considered how to get comfortable and maintain the best visibility so we can see clearly. And because we are aware of the problem area and the different things that can happen in this problem area of the pocket, we've given ourselves the best chances to make sure that we can take care of any of these issues with this problematic area. So do you see why taking all the time to consider all of these things before we even get welding is going to help us out immensely? All the hard work that we put in before we actually weld is the most important part of this exercise. So I'm happy with all the prep here. Let's get welding. Okay, so getting ready and starting out from the pocket that I made earlier. I am heading vertically up here and I'm being really careful about how much filler I'm using at the start. Traveling vertical can overfill in the blink of an eye if you're not careful. So make sure that you keep the weld narrow and focused and the amount of filler you are using a little on the lighter side. This is how it's done with this one. Approaching the end of the joint here, I'm backing off the heat to make sure that my weld does not overheat or become any bigger. Backing off slowly with good control, and I'm finished with this one. Comfort was a major factor with that pass. Now with the passes around the base, you can decide which way you want to travel with these. You can set up and rip it with a normal grip just like this here. If I can, I always prefer to stand on the other side of this joint and weld it overhand. I can see much better with this one and my fillet welding is a little bit more consistent because I can see much more clearly approaching the joint like this. Personally, I love welding fillet joints overhand. If I can, I can see much more clearly and my comfort is way better. Now the first thing I'm going to do is start out with a corner wrap like this to get set here. This is just good practice to make sure that we don't leave any open corners anywhere on your project no matter what you're doing. Make them blend out, follow a nice profile on the bottom edge like this here. You see, it's almost like a little rainbow. 
And now I have a perfect pocket that I can start with my next pass right here. Now, like we talked about earlier, there is a major problem that people run into when they are welding towards a corner. How the heck are you gonna be able to feed your filler material properly? Angles change so fast that you're basically fumbling to keep up with the filler material correctly. Here's what you do, bend the filler material. Basically, you can just guess how much you're gonna need. You make a little bend so that you can keep your filler material hand out of the way so you can see clearly. This is gonna give you a little cheat to help you work into a corner like this. This works really great welding around pipe. You can do one bend, you can do two, you can do three bends. Basically, whatever helps you to keep your hand out of your face. All right, working around my camera here, I'm just watching my bottom line to make sure that it stays straight as I am welding. I'm keeping my stepping consistency up nice and tight with this one, traveling along here. As I start to approach the pocket here, I need to make sure that I blend over the existing weld that I've put here. Basically, I'm gonna match the size of the pocket that I made earlier. Blending all of my filler and all of my edges in here. I turn, I work the corner, make sure I blend everything out. And again, when I finish off, I leave myself a nice little pocket that I can start the next pass from. Okay, now getting ready with the final pass here, I need to make sure that I completely blend into the pocket here. Maybe an extra swirl or two with the arc to make sure that I've got everything blended in. No gaps, no voids. Remember, this is the last opportunity to get any of these issues ironed out if they are still there. Making sure I completely blend all of my filler material in. Once I am happy, I start to roll on. Exact same as the last pass. I wanna watch my bottom line carefully, making sure that I keep the edge super straight, super smooth, good stepping distance, control the heat as I approach the end, and I terminate nice and slow. I'm also gonna wrap the last corner the same way that I did on the other side. No open corners left behind. Okay, that was smooth sailing, let's check it out. Look at the flow of these passes and how they look all together. We don't have any stupid buttons anywhere dumb, we don't have any starts coming out of nowhere, wrecking my consistency. All of the passes flow from one side to the other. And looking at them all together, they all keep the same size, the same shape. The stepping distance all looks similar. The consistency looks great. The wraps on the end close up the open corners really well. But most importantly, look at the pocket. The filler is washed out to all surfaces for really good edges here. Yet the edges are not too far out with too much filler involved. When you use too much filler in an area like this, this is how you block penetration. The right amount of filler material keeps your weld focused in the area, and this is how you can reliably keep up good penetration with a pocket like this. We have no gaps in between passes, no voids, no holes, no incomplete fusion. All the problems that we focused on earlier are taken care of really well here in my opinion. My free aluminum TIG welding class on my website is gonna teach you how to TIG weld really well. Register and learn from your own shop at home. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. I am Dusty James. Phil and Chill, we will talk soon. Peace.